Hey guys, I'm Steph. And I'm Richard. It's our little kitty, Maki. Not so little anymore. Ow! Question from our Facebook page. Panda Chan asks, in Japan and China, there are a lot of suicides. Is this the situation in Korea? I wish I could say it's not the situation in Korea. I definitely wish I could say that it's not the situation in Korea. So that means, is it the situation in Korea? Yes. yes. First off, we can safely say that this is not the most sensitive topic we could talk about. I think talking about possibly sex or birth control could be more sensitive than this. They do actually talk about this. Yeah, and most people know at least one person who has committed suicide. That's totally true. Small country, lots of people, high stress, lots of pressure on most people, especially as you're growing up. I mean, you think about the school system, for example, by the time you get to middle school, you know the sunung is six years out, the sunung being the university entrance exam, and a lot of kids start stressing about this test. That's another thing. People commit suicide there of all ages. I hate to say this, but as an American, most people that I've encountered or know of from my home country that have committed suicide are adults. How many people in Korea would you say you've met that know someone that has possibly committed suicide? Almost everyone that I've met in Korea knows somebody who's committed suicide. I would say same for me. I think for me what's one of the more telling things is that there are so many precautions out there. For example, buildings, you don't really have as many balconies that you can go out on. Usually things have very high glass or screens or like even when you go down to the subway, they're usually enclosed to prevent suicide. When I first arrived, there weren't that many plexiglass barriers in between the tracks and where you enter the subway cars when you go down into the subway. Since that time, they've put up in Seoul Metro and even greater Seoul, almost all the stations have them now. Yeah. That is one of the common ways that people have decided to commit suicide before is by jumping in front of the moving train right before the train enters the station. Another way that I've heard they do it is by jumping off of the tall buildings because they have so many tall buildings and that's right. They make these buildings now, residential buildings, without access to outside or outdoor patios or balconies. They look like they have them but they're actually fake. They're just bars by the windows and you can't actually go outside. If you have access to the rooftop, there's usually some sort of system in place to try to help keep people from jumping off. On a lot of bridges, they actually have like special emergency phone call centers set up where if you just pick up a phone, there's a 911 operator or 119 in Korea there to talk to you to try to help talk you out of it. There's a particular bridge in Seoul that's famous for this that has lots of phones set up because it's sort of known as the suicide bridge. And I don't know what the name of it is right now. We can look it up and pop it in there once we're done. We did Google this a little bit before we started, but this isn't one of those, oh, we're gonna give all the facts about suicide in Korea. Is Korea the number one suicide country? We don't actually know if it's number one, number two. We know it's up there with Japan, China, and Hong Kong. They're all sort of lumped into this category of like high suicide rate when you compare it with the rest of the world, I think. I have broached this subject before in my class. In fact, I have them read something that's about suicide and the suicide rate, which we're actually talking about the Asian countries. I find that not only have they known someone either in their building or a friend from their school or a friend of a friend that has done this, but that some of them have seen a dead body laying on the ground from someone who had jumped off a building. You know, they talk about this if I'm asking them. They'll say, yeah, I know someone who committed suicide. Someone from my high school committed suicide. One of the people in my apartment building or a building over from where I live, it happened. It's unfortunately more common than they want to let on. It's unfortunate. It really is because I know they do have it a lot in dramas and actually a lot of drama actors and actresses typically once a year you find out or you hear about somebody who has committed suicide. In dramas they usually are either suffering from horrible situations in their life, they're going to go to jail and they're trying to escape jail, or they have financial problems and they're trying to wipe the slate clean. Wait a second and you're talking about characters. Characters in dramas that have committed suicide. Okay, so you're not talking about the actual celebrities doing this. No, no, I'm talking about the dramatic characters in the dramas, what they've done, how and why people usually commit suicide. Like there's a lot of these commonalities and I think they reflect society. They do, yeah. I mean, a lot of times we get questions from you guys, are Korean dramas like 
real life in Korea. We've done a couple of these videos, but everybody knows that there's a big problem with suicide. I mean, Korea, in some ways, for some people can be like a pressure cooker. Even once you get out of high school, you got pressure to do well in university with high grades in order to be able to get yourself a good job. I've had students actually say, Richard, fail me because I'm not ready to get a job yet. I need one more semester, which is a very Korean thing. The first time that happened to me, I had to have a student explain to me why, because he was an A student. He wanted an F because he hadn't gotten a job. And usually firms, companies in Korea do not hire unless you're coming right out of university. If you've graduated and taken a year off and then you want to try and get a job a year after your graduation, you almost have no chance of getting hired, so I've heard. Really? I didn't even know that. I've never had that happen to me before. Yeah, the majority of them want to get a job even before they graduate. Some of them have gotten a job before actual graduation and they got to come to me and say, oh yeah, I'm not going to be in class. I got hired already, which is the whole point of going to college in the first place. And so I have to make some special accommodation for them to do the work outside of class. That's a fairly common theme. So the pressure's on to get a job. And then once you have the job, the pressure's on to get in a relationship and get married and then have kids. Like all of these things that we know about as part of natural life or like the way that you should live your life like they exist there in a slightly more strict environment wouldn't you say I would say there's just a lot more pressure Korea is a lot more conservative whenever it comes to these different issues and so there is a lot more pressure on young people to do all of these things even older people to carry on the idealistic life and not have any problems a lot of people see it as the way out there was a crisis in 1998 a financial crisis where a lot of people lost a lot of money in the stock market in Asia, in particular in South Korea. And a lot of students that have come through my class have told me stories in writing about their father losing their job and their mother losing their job, but especially the dads. And it was hard times. It was hard times for that entire country. That was a time of a lot of suicides with older, like 40, 50 something year old people. Mm. And this also reminds me of when you have big national tragedies, for example, the Sewol incident, how the vice principal, he felt so responsible that he committed suicide. Yeah, even one of their ex-presidents committed suicide in 2009 or 2010, I don't remember the year exactly, No Mu Hyun, who was, by the way, my favorite president of all time of South Korea since they split North and South Korea. He was caught in a scandal where he had supposedly laundered $5 million. But they're not even sure if it was actually true because he was known as the people's president. He didn't actually even graduate from university. And within a couple of days, he jumped off a mountain and it was really sad because he probably didn't even do anything wrong. He just felt this overwhelming pride to do everything right for the people. And this one tiny little thing came up and he couldn't handle it. There's actually one thing that to me kind of stands out and is maybe a cause for some of this and this is a problem that I have with Korea and this is the lack of psychiatric help and psychology and counseling many people still see that as a negative thing a taboo like you just want to blend in and be like everybody else you don't want to be strange you don't want to have anything wrong with you a majority of your healthcare services don't actually cover counseling and psychiatric help they don't even really believe in it at all, the majority of them. Though that's changing. It is changing and you can see culture starting to promote it a little bit here and there. When you did have the Say Well incident, they did send people down there. Kids were doing like art therapy and stuff like that around the country. So you do have it starting to emerge, but a lot of times if you have problems, you just don't talk about it. And it's almost as if the Say Well is going to open up that area that they don't really want to go to with the therapy and the psychiatric help. Generally speaking, a lot of people, like, they don't want to have it, but now they're starting to, like, get counseling more in schools and stuff like that. You've had two Korean dramas on psychology and psychiatric stuff in the last year, year and a half. It's starting to make its emergence, but it's really still slow, small, something that people aren't really talking about. So that's it for today's Life in Korea. We included some statistics and links to suicide articles about South Korea in the blog post. So click here to check that out. If you have a question for us, don't be shy. Drop a note in the YouTube comments on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash hollyouback, or in the comment section on our blog, hollyouback.com. And like this video, give it a big thumbs up and subscribe you guys for Asian drama and life in Korea videos. That's it for today's life in Korea. Experience, Experience it. it! Do you drama? Do you drama? Huh? Me and Maki drama together. What, what drama do you drama? It's okay, it's love. That's a drama, right?